I want to jump to a different topic of conversation right now. One that I don't know. I I I look at and say we were pretty okay with the situation, even when it was gaining speed and looking like okay, this kid, this guy is going to be something special this season. We were still okay with where everything stood. Some transpire something transpires, and now the whole NFL is looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers saying, guys, you you messed up. You messed up pretty big. And maybe you agree with it. Maybe you do not. Who knows? But for those of you who have not been paying attention, the Carolina Panthers the other day inked Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard, to a few of the details there. Something $33 million contract. Four years, $33 million, I believe, is the is the terms of service. Yep. And $15 million fully guaranteed for Chuba Hubbard. Which comes out to just about $8 million a year, mm-hmm. I would say, for a guy that, yeah, definitely impressive. Actually, I believe is above Najee Harris in rushing yards this season, if, if I remember our conversation correctly from a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Najee Harris is fifth year option, six point seven million dollars. And the Steelers could have picked that up fully guaranteed and had their running back for another season. And at the time you were thinking, yeah, you know, I get it, but the running back market, it had its one year, now it's going to go back down. This is a good move for the Steelers. It makes sense financially. It, we we disagreed with it while saying it was okay. You know, it it wasn't the worst mistake if it turns out to be a mistake because it probably wasn't the best move if you made it. And even if it turned out great, nah, what's the what's the ceiling of this situation? Well, there are two sides to the coin. Najee Harris is about to get paid, my friends. And for everybody who keeps asking me, is Najee Harris coming back in 2025? The answer is no and remains no and will continue to remain no, because Najee Harris is not coming back to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's going to go get the bag somewhere, and he's going to get $10 million plus a year, and he's going to have a great time in some city not wearing black and gold. The Pittsburgh Steelers, on the other hand, now have a conversation to have. How do we replace Najee Harris? Because right now we look like losers in this situation. I wrote a story yesterday, or actually I didn't write it. I I helped create it with Jacob Pinturi. Shout out Jacob Pinturi on SI.com that was titled Steelers look like losers in the Najee Harris decision because that's what they look like right now. But there is always next offseason. The Steelers will have to try to replace Najee Harris. And I think there are options to do so. Some good ones. Some both free agent and NFL draft guys that you can look at that they probably will look at to say this could be an option for Najee Harris. I'll ask you first, how how down bad are the Pittsburgh Steelers right now? And does your mind change? Has your mind changed at all? Because you were, again, the thought was probably should have picked it up okay that they didn't. Has it changed at all now that a guy that, I mean, I'm sorry, but Najee Harris is better than is is ink and deals for pretty cheap yeah i think at the end of the day it's it looks pretty bad on the steelers that they didn't pick up this option we we had talked about it and said it's okay that they didn't but it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense yes i mean we were trying to see the kind of the thought process behind it but it was okay you can sign them to a fifth year option for six seven million dollars that's that's what you would hope to be paying him now that would be a steal now if you could get him for that next year so at this point the Steelers do look bad and not getting him and not signing him to that fifth year option and and like you said I feel like by the day by the game by the carry he is just making more and more money on that next contract and more than likely that next contract's not coming in Pittsburgh it would be nice to see him come back for a hometown discount but at the same time running backs of this era know that they need to get their money when they can. And I don't fault Najee for doing the same thing. If, if that takes them elsewhere, uh, that's, that's probably what's going to do uh, what he's going to do. It's going to take them elsewhere. I, uh, I, I get asked this. Everybody asks me this all the time. So I'll ask you, well, what's your percentage? Give me your percentage prediction <laughs> on Najee Harris returning to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think there is, I would put it at a, at a clean 75 because I think there's a 25% chance if they go on a run, get close to a Super Bowl. 
And all parties say, you know what? Let's run it back. And by run it back, we mean run it back as close to this formula as possible. I can yeah. see Najee saying, okay, maybe I take a little bit of a haircut, but I want to win a Super Bowl. And right now, the Steelers were the team that was close. That's the the 25% that if they get going and Arthur Smith can talk to him and say, listen, look at the year you just had. It's going to be better next year because our offensive line is going to have more cohesion. Our young offensive linemen are going to have you know, better, a little bit more experience, and you're going to have a more secured and defined quarterback position. Because at that yes. point, they'll know. At that point, it will be undeniable which direction that they need to go. So if that if that all happens, that's why I leave such a high percentage. And I know it's weird saying 25 is high, but I leave that high percentage for Najee returning. I feel like 25 is a good number. I, I do. I think that there is that opportunity. That 25 could also include the Pittsburgh Steelers saying, yeah, man, we messed up and we're going to make it even worse by re-signing you to a deal or you franchise tag somebody because you could franchise tag Najee Harris. I mean, you'd be nuts to franchise tag Naj Najee Harris, but you can do it. I think the, the franchise tag will be like 12 million bucks. Could you imagine? <laughs> no, big no. Um, but I do think that 25% is a decent spot, but there are fixes and that's the important part here is how do you fix it? And this is nothing against Najee. I don't think Najee is, I think he's replaceable, but I don't think you're going to go find another Najee. And I think that there is risk with all of these guys. Even the first guy I'll name, there are risk or there is risk associated because you just don't know if they turn out to be the same old reliable that you currently have on the roster. We'll start in the NFL draft. Aston Genty is the easiest one you could possibly name. If you're as dedicated to your football team as I am, you've got to check out my partner's DraftKings Sportsbooks. With options to bet on your favorite team, favorite players, props, and more, there's something for everyone. And right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Now that's something to celebrate this season. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up using my promo code ALLSTEALERS. The crown is yours. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use your $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings same game parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same game. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code ALLSTEALERS and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code ALLSTEALERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. But the chances of Pittsburgh Steelers finding an Ashton Genty or finding Ashton Genty is slim to none. This guy's going to go top 15, almost undoubtedly, possibly higher. He could end up in, I mean, you're telling me that Jerry Jones is getting all this backlash for not <laughs> going out and getting Derrick Henry, and they're going to finish in the top 10 of the draft, and He's not going to get Ashton, the Boise State kid. They're not going to go get the Boise State kid from Texas. I mean, they're, Jerry Jones is all about keeping his team relevant. The best way to keep your team relevant is to get the crazy running back that could be the next Saquon Barkley or Jameer G Gibbs or Derrick Henry or whoever it is. Chances are Ashton Genty is off the table for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Amari and Hampton is a great name to watch. And to be honest with you, James Jones is a great name to watch. James Jones is a dude who works in a very fast offense who, yes, is, is maybe not the ground and pound that Najee Harris is, but I think could be the zone running back that Najee Harris. Can be. I mean, there are different types of zone rushing attacks. Kyle, mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan runs a zone rushing attack and Raheem Mostert, who's, Got no power. He's just the fastest man alive uh, at all times. Worked very fine in a zone rushing offense. I think you could find that. You know, people will say Derrick Henry's Derrick Henry. I agree with you, but Derrick Henry's also much more of a 
<laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent. But yeah. he's also a speed back, maybe yeah. more than he is a power back. Like if you really look at it, Derrick Henry is a big man, scary to tackle. A lot of his rushes are he gets open and he takes off and he's out running everybody. That you could utilize stuff like that. James Jones is certainly an option that I would appreciate for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I think you could go deeper. And and I apologize if I'm not looking at my screen. So if I'm freaking out, I apologize. But you get Rashad Smith is a great name out of SMU who we just watched beat Pitt. You could go Khalil Mullings. You could go Caleb Johnson, which somebody tossed out there. I think it goes as deep as possibly Travion Henderson. I really do. I think you could get Travion Henderson out of Ohio State and feel pretty good. That's a power back. That's a guy that's going to he's going to hit you. He's going to punch you right in the face and feel pretty okay about it. Dylan Sampson could also be on there, but I'm not as high on Dylan Sampson. I would be totally honest with you as I am some of these other guys. There are options and options in both sides. You know, you want to go speed. You want to go Jordan James. You want to go Brashad Smith. You want to go power. You want to go Omar in Hampton. You want to go Caleb Johnson. You want to go a guy like Khalil Mullings out of Michigan. There are names. Then there are the free agents. And I'm excited for this list. I'm going to do this off the cuff. Cuff, excuse me. Hit me with the names to replace Najee Harris in free agency. Yeah, I think we did this once before, and the first name is always very comical. James Conner is the top free agent, according to Spotrack, <laughs> at the running back position. Uh, what's, but outside, the, what's the percentage of James Conner coming back to the Pittsburgh Steelers, higher or lower than Najee Harris? Well, I was going to say 0.5. <laughs> 0.5 percent i don't i don't think james connor is coming back to pittsburgh i i okay. don't think that ends up happening okay okay uh, but outside of james connor the other free agents aaron jones jeff wilson aj Dillon, mm -hmm. nick chubb mm -hmm. javante williams mm -hmm. zeke elliott alex madison and then let me see if there's any other interesting names here jk dobbins having a really good year in la we'll see whether or not he gets re-signed uh rico dowdle having himself Something yeah, it could be a name year to watch in Dallas as well. So there's there's names on this list, but again, how many starting caliber names there are? Only about five or six. I'll toss this out there. Aaron Jones is a name that intrigues me a lot on that mm -hmm. list because he's a veteran. He knows how to do this. He's he's good when he's healthy. You could bring in our back Jalen Warren. You can go get a rookie in the NFL draft and then sign. Aaron Jones, I don't think he's going to be expensive because he's probably just about 30 years old, which would work pretty well. J.K. Dobbins would be good, but he's going to get re-signed in L.A. And I mean, I, I like J.K. Dobbins a lot, but this is the first year he's ever healthy and we're only halfway through the season. Can you read off the list again after Aaron Jones? There was another name. It was not A.J. Dillon. Was it Nick Chubb or Javante Williams? Javante Williams. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Javante Williams came out when the Pittsburgh Steelers drafted Najee Harris, and everybody and their mother was telling you that Najee Harris was going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Everybody and their mother was telling you this. Javante Williams was that number two. It was not Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne was not ending up in Pittsburgh. It was either going to be Najee Harris or Javante Williams. And Javante Williams, when healthy, is good, and he runs very well. But the Denver Broncos are not going to keep him around because – they're not going to be able to afford him just like the Pittsburgh Steelers aren't going to be able to afford Najee Harris. Mm -hmm. The difference is that you're probably not signing Najee Harris for under $10 million. You might sign Javante Williams to a one-year, maybe a two-year, $8 million a year deal and feel pretty okay about that situation. What's the max? What's your number that you'd sign a running back to? All of them. It doesn't matter who it is. What's the I max? I mean, again, that list is a list of names, certainly. I think there's only four or five that would be worth getting, especially if you're trying to replace a guy like Najee Harris. Not that anybody's going to be a one-for-one -one replacement, but you need yeah. to, at the very least, get somewhere near that level. I would personally prefer to go NFL draft because I think there's enough names oh, I agree. that you could get somebody in the third round. But if I am sticking to, hey, I'm going free agency class, I'm not going above that seven, eight million dollar mark. I think that's even some even high. I think that unless you're getting a Nick Chubb, unless you're getting, you know, a James Conner back, which again I put very little stock into that, then I think you're probably around six million dollars. Because if that was the case, you should have just 
as we started this conversation, you should have just picked up Najee's fifth year option. They should have done that in the first place, but they but, didn't. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to not go back to that. It's it is. It's very hard to not go back to that. And and no matter what they do, the the, the end result will be this is a mistake. Yeah. The end result to this will be the Steelers messed up. They had the option. They messed up the option. But they have they they're gonna have to do something. And I like the NFL dra draft if you could get it. The problem is, and I get it. It's a loaded draft class at running back. But it's also a loaded draft class at running back right now, and not you know six months from now when yeah. it really matters when they go through the medicals and when college football season's over and you see what happens during the combine and so on and so forth. That's when you'll really know. And you're not going to get an Ashton Genty. And that is like, that's the guy, you know, besides that, you're going second, third round. Okay, great. Maybe it works out, but maybe it doesn't, you know, and maybe it works out, but maybe it works out a year and not this first season, because that's the other part of this is that rookie running backs almost never like have that crazy season anymore. It feels very unlikely that that ha that that's the case. I mean, Najee Harris had that crazy season and, and people raved about how this dude's it this is this is it Najee Harris is the guy right here and then he slowly took a step back but most even, even Jameer Gibbs last year impressive not Jameer Gibbs this year not even close and and I I think that that's where the risk you'd be taking whereas and you could go get I'm telling you Javante Williams is a name that is a name to watch the Steelers liked Javante Williams they I think if he didn't go to North Carolina there was a better shot he ended up in Pittsburgh 